Hi, I'm Leanne from yourhomebasemom.com, and today we are making a small batch red velvet cake. It is the perfect dessert for your romantic Valentine celebration or any celebration. This cake is moist, it's delicious, it has a hint of chocolate, and it's topped with a cream cheese frosting. And it's the perfect amount for two people with some leftovers for the next day. So join me in the kitchen as we make small batch recipes with big taste. We are gonna start our red velvet cake by adding in a half of a cup of softened butter. And you wanna make sure that butter is, is soft. You don't want it melted, but you want it soft so that you can kind of smash it a bit with a spoon. It's gonna help you to incorporate that sugar into it. We're gonna mix this up totally by hand. So um, we're not gonna use a, a mixer. All right, then we're gonna add in a half a cup of granulated sugar. And then we're just gonna mix that together till it's kind of nice and fluffy. You want all of that sugar and butter incorporated. All right, after it's all incorporated, sometimes I even wash my hands, get my hands in there and knead it a little bit. Um, we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna grab a second bowl. Now, this cake's gonna take three bowls, but they're little bowls, so that's okay, all right? So we're gonna mix in this one our dry ingredients, which we're gonna take a half a cup of all-purpose flour. I just like to uh, scoop and then scrape. We're gonna add in a quarter teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of cocoa powder. And then I'm just gonna take a fork, and we'll kind of fluff that together. Then in our third bowl, we are going to add our liquid ingredients. And in there, now one important ingredient in red velvet cake is buttermilk, okay? Um, it causes a chemical reaction to take place that I'm gonna explain in just a minute. So buttermilk is really important. If you don't have actual buttermilk, I'm gonna put some um, ways that you can make your own buttermilk using vinegar or lemon juice in the description down below. I like to get actually buy buttermilk from the store. It's got a thicker consistency and I think it does make a difference in the flavor and texture. So we got a, our buttermilk there. I don't have my trusty assistant here today, so. I'm kind of having to look at my cheat notes more. But then we've got one egg we're gonna add in there. To add in a half of a teaspoon, not that here, of vanilla. I just usually pour it in. And then also into here, the last thing we're gonna add is our baking soda. Now, we're gonna use just a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. Let me mix up my egg really quick. Get that mixed up with our buttermilk. And we are going to add in some baking soda and we are going to use a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And then we are gonna add in, after that we're gonna add in some white vinegar. Now, you may wonder why is this called red velvet cake? Well, I'll give you a little history lesson and then we'll have a little science lesson too. Um, when I'm gonna add some vinegar into this, okay, and a chemical reaction is gonna take place, it's gonna get nice and foamy and bubbly and gas is gonna be developed. And what this does to the cake is it gives the cake a nice smooth velvet texture. So therefore that's where the velvet part came from. The red came from, not from the color originally, but originally brown sugar was called red sugar. And so that's where the name came from. And it wasn't until years down the road that bakers actually started putting in red food coloring into it to actually tint the cake red. So now we're gonna add in our white vinegar and we are using a half of a teaspoon of white vinegar. And this is where it's gonna get foamy. You see it's going to get nice and light and foamy. All right. And then at this point, if you want, you can add in some food coloring. And I think the recipe uh, calls for two teaspoons of red food coloring, which is not a lot. This is, cake's going to have a little bit more of a dark pink tint to it. You can put more in it if you want a really deep red, but I find then that my teeth end up turning red when I'm eating the cake. So I don't like to put in too much red food coloring. Okay. Now it's time to assemble all those bowls to ingredients together. We've got our butter and our sugar mixture, and we're gonna alternate adding in a little bit of wet, and then kind of mix that in, incorporate that, and then we will add in a little bit of dry and just alternate back and forth until we have all the ingredients combined. And then, I think I mentioned before to add in your food coloring, we're actually gonna wait and add it in here at the end. All right, so then we'll add in some of our dry. I'm probably doing it in half each time. And you just wanna mix just until all the ingredients are combined. You don't wanna over mix. 
especially in small batch recipes, um, over mixing can cause your cake to be tough. And that's why I prefer to do it by hand too, because you have less of a tendency to over mix your ingredients. Add in the last of our liquid ingredient. So if you don't add in your food coloring, your cake's gonna have like a slight, uh, just like a light chocolate color to it. But I'm gonna go ahead and add it in because it's Valentine's Day. And so I'll add in two teaspoons of red food coloring. And there we go. We're ready to pop it into our six inch prepared cake pan. We're ready to pour it into our prepared cake pan. And then we're going to put it into a 350 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Make sure you get out all the cake batter and small batch recipes, that's really important. Every little bit counts, so give it a nice scrape and get out everything you can. We're just gonna smooth it over the top. And it's ready to go into our oven. While our cake is baking, we're gonna make our frosting. Now, red velvet cake traditionally has a cream cheese frosting on it, which I think is the best part of the cake. Um, if you're not a cream cheese fan, go ahead and use a buttercream, but we're doing cream cheese today. And so in my bowl, I have four ounces of softened cream cheese. Now you wanna make sure it's softened because we're mixing it by hand and it'll be easier to incorporate everything and not end up with a lumpy cream cheese. So into my four ounces, which is half of a block of cream cheese. We're gonna add a quarter cup of softened butter. And then the only other thing you're gonna need is a little vanilla and some powdered sugar. After we have that all nice and smooth and incorporated, we'll add in our powdered sugar and we're gonna start with a cup of powdered sugar. If you find you need more, no problem, just add in a little bit more and then a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Mix that all together. Okay, we got a, just a nice smooth spreading consistency. Nice mix together. If you end up with a few lumps in your, sour, uh, your cream cheese, no worries, it's still gonna taste great. So after our cake is done baking, we're gonna let it cool in the pan for 10 minutes, take it out, put it onto the rack, and then we have to wait till it's totally cool to frost it. Two tips for you to make sure that your cake is done. Use the finger and the cake should bounce back. You hear that, it bounces back. Or take a toothpick, insert it in the middle, and it should come out clean. Okay, so our cake is cooled. I let it cool in the pan, 10 minutes, took it out. Just remember to pull off the little piece of wax paper that is on there. Now, for my cakes, one of the things I like to do um, is I buy these cake cardboard cake rounds. You can find them at uh, Michael's, a cake decorating store, or online at Amazon, and I'll link to some below. What this does is I will frost it on this and that allows me to easily transfer it to my cake plate because I make kind of a mess when I'm frosting. Now, disclaimer here, I am not a cake decorating expert. I'm not, there are a lot of people on YouTube, go search cake decorating if you want some great cake decorating tips. Um, I can get some frosting on there, make it look fairly decent and make it taste good. So. I've got my cream cheese frosting here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of put just a thin coat, it's kind of called a crumb coat, I guess, um, on my cake. Cause if you've ever frosted a cake before and you've ended up with lots of crumbs getting in your frosting, this helps prevent that. Cause you may get some crumbs in this layer, but then we're gonna go through and put a second layer on and you don't get crumbs in that one. So just put a nice thin layer of frosting all the way around our little cute cake. Like I said, I make a mess. All right, so I've got my crumb coat on there and it's not perfect, it's not even, it's not pretty, but we're gonna stick this in the refrigerator for 15, 20 minutes to kind of let this harden up and it's gonna make it a lot easier to put our final layer of frosting on. Pulled my cake out after it chilled and I frosted the rest of it. I didn't wanna make you suffer watching me frost my cake, but I do love using my offset spatula whenever I um, have to frost a cake. It works really well. And now it's ready to go. If you want a little fancier way to um, frost this, you can click below on my blog post down below and uh, you can see it there. But what doesn't make a cake fancier and more delicious than some sprinkles? And so since this is for Valentine's Day, I'm gonna sprinkle some just red sprinkles on top of my cake. 
and it is ready for a party, for a romantic dinner for two, to share. All we have to do now is cut ourselves a piece. Mm, like I said, that frosting, the best part. Well, thank you for joining me in the kitchen today. Make sure you click down below to check out some of my other small batch dessert recipes, and I'll see you in the next video.